Hola, bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Today we are with Richard Marshall. And Richard is speaking to us all the way from sunny Torrejón in Spain. Hola. <laughs> Hola, Richard. Richard, ¿qué tal? Uh, Richard, so you reached out to us to, to Lightspeed Spanish, um, you know, and you said that it would be it would be interesting to have a chat about your experiences of learning Spanish. How long have you been learning Spanish? I've been learning Spanish, I would say, since 2011. Uh, what so that's 11 years learning Spanish since I met my wife in London, who's, who's from who's from Spain. Right. Um, and then living here, learning it, what I call intensively, being mm -hmm. around it all the time, uh, almost eight years. So right. Okay, so cool. So why don't you just give us a little bit of back? How did you meet your wife? How did all of that happen? What are you doing living in Spain? Well, I met my wife uh, in a bar in London, uh, just one Friday night out. And uh, got got chatting away with her, and we were together in London for uh, yeah, I don't know, a couple of years before we got married. But she got married in Toledo, uh, oh, out here. Uh, I'm from I'm from Blackburn in Lancashire, and she's from Torrejón de Roth in Spain. And we decided out of those two places, which is the the most beautiful to look at and be in, and all that. And we kind of said, well, let's pick something kind of great and in the sun, but maybe near near Torrejón. So we, we got married in, in Toledo. Uh -huh. um, and then not long after that, I uh, did an intensive course um, out, out here in, in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was after that intensive course that I sort of learned about um, the opportunity to maybe work out here to the demand for, for English teachers, mm -hmm. uh, native English teachers in Spain. I didn't know anything about that. Uh, I found out about that and found out just like learning the language for me, uh, in in the UK, it just was it was a bit too difficult for me. I think uh, some people have the ability to pick up languages really easily at night school or whatever, but for me, I just found that I think being immersed in it uh, all the time was the way forward. So we decided to move out here uh, and came out to Spain. And actually, uh, the first I heard of Lightspeed Spanish was um, in the back of a textbook that I ha that I had on the intensive course. And it said recommended podcasts and video casts to, to look at. Uh, Gordon and Cynthia like to speak Spanish. And I kind of started watching it. So I was actually watching your videos uh, really early on in my learning Spanish kind of process. Mm. Uh, and one day um, I was out walking through Torrejón with my wife. Uh, and I saw you. You were in the street walking your dog. And it was, it was I couldn't believe it because for, for me... You were just super famous for me. You know, you were this guy that I was watching all the time. You had loads of followers and books out and all that. And you were right there. So I was like, hey, you know, hey, how you doing? You're Gordon, right? And I don't know whether you remember that. I, I do remember it. I remember it because obviously that doesn't happen very often. When it does happen, it kind of sticks in my mind. And this guy running over to me going, hey, you're Gordon. I'm like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's Well, it's, I don't know. I've met a few famous people in my time and I've always sort of thought, I'm not going to harangue them and bother them, but I thought, you know, I'll say hello or whatever. And for me, in my eyes, you were famous and that was that. Was that. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, and since then, I've, uh, I've I've done a lot of Spanish classes. I did uh, a couple of years of actually having one-to-one uh, -one classes online for uh -huh. for for a while. I was doing like six hours a week, just one-to-one -one online, and just really getting to get me around the grammar and stuff. Um, and it, and then listening to like speak Spanish as well. And um, yeah, recently I reached out to you last week because I'm sort of I'm not at the end of my journey by any means. I think it's a it's it's a sort of moving feast, really. It kind of it's an objective that's always there to be to be good at a language and stuff. But um, I thought wouldn't it be cool to sort of like have a chat with you now uh, in Spanish um, and uh, yeah, just talk about my journey really and mainly about the sort of uh, I don't know what is fluent. You know, this kind of perfectionism thing that a lot of people have when they're learning a language. You know, like. Uh, it, uh, people say to me back home, my mates, they'll say, oh, you, are you fluent now, aren't you? And I, I'm like, what, what do you mean fluent now? Like, if they're next to me in a restaurant and I order some food and some drinks and, and chat with the waiter or waitress, they're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. You're totally fluent at this. But that's in their eyes, isn't it? It's like how you frame it. It depends who you're with. It depends who's there. But then an hour later, I'm with my Spanish friends, uh, my Spanish family here, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, stuff, and I'm completely lost. I mean, I've, I, I can't keep up with the jokes. 
the the you know the cultural references i've no idea and i think i'm i'm awful at this so mm. it's just it's i just think if someone had said this to me eight years ago like it's okay you know relax don't compare yourself to to sort of others don't panic about it. you'll get there you know poco a poco as they say here um and i just thought i thought you know i'd, I'd love to be able to have a chat and offer that, mm. that experience to your listeners really Sure. Yeah. And, and of course, you, you know, you've you've been living in Spain for eight years now. I, I remember when I first started learning Spanish, I remember I kind of had done two years of living in Mexico, I'd lived for two years immersion. Yeah. Right. So really small compared to what you've done. And I remember somebody said to me, two years, you must be fluent. <laughs> and I felt I felt really bad when they said that because I, I was thinking inside, I know I'm not fluent. But it, it but as you were saying, it's a perception thing. And the question is, what is fluent? I know. Well, your fluent might be very different to my fluent, might be very different to, you know, Bob right down the street. Fluent means what? What? I know. You can talk with a with a quantum physicist uh, fluent, or you can talk with a waiter fluent. You know, it's... it's. I know. I think it's a really... I think it's a, a an incorrect phrase, really. I think it should be yeah. banned, really, fluent. I think it's... <laughs> It yeah. should be prohibido for anyone trying to learn, learn certainly a language. You know, I think it, 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 it's crazy because, um, you know, I mean, you and I had a, a little back and forth before off camera. And, you, you know, I asked you about, do you feel ever have days where you just don't feel good at it? Because I can't believe that when I, when I listen to you speaking Spanish. And you're like, ah, sometimes, you know, we just feel lost, you know. Well, so. remember, this is not... This is not our first language. You know, with, with your your first language, you don't have to even think about it. I mean, sometimes you have to struggle for a word or whatever. Mm. When when we're when we're dealing with the second language that we've learned later in life, not as a child. No. Then we have to process it in a different way. And 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 we've got these big yawning gaps in our Spanish of mm. conversations we've never had before. Never had. Yeah. You know, and then suddenly you find yourself having that conversation that you've never had in your life. And you, you think, well, I, I can't even navigate my way through this. I don't know how, how it's said, you know. So it's it's kind of, I think it's a lifelong journey that, that never really ends. Never really ends. No. You know, and no, I think I... we've got to just just calm down a bit, you know, with wanting to reach this goal, this this, this goal that really isn't there. I know what you mean. It's, uh, it's also, I think, a lot... Gordon, I don't know whether you agree with this. It depends on who you're speaking to and, and communicating with, doesn't it? I think um, because communication is a two-way street or a three-way or four-way street, whatever. And, you know, with the best will in the world, if you try and your best to remember how it's said, if it's masculine, feminine, is it plur plural, plural or singular? And then suddenly you get this person who just has this, I say in Spanish, this, you know, cara de... Confusion, you know, they, they they almost look at you before you've even started. They, they've got this face of, huh? okay, no and, and that kind of destroys your confidence a bit, you know. And you're thinking, well, sure. and the mascarilla, the, the masks as well, the, the pandemic mask. That was terrible. Get, that was terrible. Trying to get anything done in this country with the mask, and then the be the plastic perspex between you and them, and they've got a mask, and they speak fast. Some speak faster than others. I mean, that's the other yeah. thing. The pace of the language is is massively different. So, you know, you can go out some days feeling uh, good about your language and then all of a sudden you just come on thinking, I'm, this is awful, I'm rubbish at this. And then vice versa, other days it's, it's the opposite, you know. Do you know, I read a book a long, a long time ago, right at the start of my journey, and it was, um, it was by some famous musician who came to live in Spain and it was called Driving Over Lemons, I think. It was a series of books. Right. He was talking about just that. The moments of absolute where you're just in your bliss, you're having a conversation, it's flowing, you're just thinking, This is, I've got this sorted, you know. And you yeah. have those moments, and then you have other moments where you just think, Oh, I, I, I'm not even understanding, I don't know what, what he's just said to me, you know. It's like the simplest thing, and you don't know what they said. And so, it's kind of it's very, very much like a roller coaster ride when you're on the turn. I mean, that's the beauty of it, it's fun, really. It's fun, I know. And how often, when you have those moments of, uh, you know, I don't have a clue what this person just said. Do you do that thing where you just go, see, sí, Bali, yeah, CC? Sí, sí. Do Ooh. you just nod and get through it as opposed to, because okay? there's only so many, there's only so many times you can you ask, isn't there? You, yeah. you, do you know what I mean? There's only so many times you can ask them to repeat it as well, because I'll go for, you know, I'll ask them once, but okay. 
But <laughs> you know, because you're in a you're in a bar. It's noisy, and I, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I mean, you know, for my for whatever reason, I have this ten, tinnitus thing going on in my ears. So when you're in a bar, I can hear the television. I can hear the barman behind the bar. Right, I can right. hear the children in the street, but I can't hear the person that's in front of me. Or what have you right. just? So I'm I, I'm okay with saying, but I call okay, yeah, that's the job. But if they have to repeat it twice, and I still don't understand what they said, I just let it go. You so gotta move on. I, Sí, por supuesto. You know, uh, uh, I could be agreeing to anything. I could be agreeing to anything. You know, something really bad. But what the hell? <laughs> I always, I always liken it as well to sort of like a, a jigsaw puzzle, right? And 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 I always think, look, if there are a few pieces missing in the puzzle, that's that's okay. As long as the context is there and you kind of understand, you can get from A to B with a message. That's okay. You know what I mean? You don't have to fill in absolutely every single piece of the puzzle to just to just get there. It's and Exactly. It, that's all you know what I mean. It's that relax of not being too perfectionist about it. Just move on. It's like get from A to B. And if you don't know the words, just play a game with it, like taboo. You know, the game taboo where you can't mention some of the words below. You know, if you don't know the word for iglesia, right? If you just if you don't know that word and you're trying to say church in Spanish and you just kind of go, eh, bueno, fui a eh, el edificio donde la gente el, el, el domingo. Van para yeah. a Dios. Para con <laughs> you know, Dios. Just, uh -huh. And they'll tell you, you know, they'll say, ah, Iglesia. And you're like, ah, great, thanks. So it's like a mini game of taboo in a way. Do you know what I mean? And I, that's all right. You know, if you don't know it, but you're not so, so difficult to remember uh, X thousand words, isn't it? So just go easy on yourself. You know, that's kind of what I, I think. Like that's, and that's, a, that's a, a great explanation of, of, how you have to talk you talk around things sometimes to get yeah. there and and you know then then they help you then they help you but that's i think the level that we want to get to is that where you come to a roadblock but you know the way to get around the roadblock yeah you know? and that's that's where if you can get to that place where you say a ver es que yo no sé esta palabra pero eh, es x y y z no and the person goes ah and that's it. Off you go again. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of where we want to be. We don't. You don't have to. You can't know everything. And if you no. think that if, if you think that you've got to know everything before you start speaking, you'll never speak in your life. You know. No, it's a it's a really good point. That and I, I another thing I used to do all the time, and I still do it now, depending on the person's reaction to me, is almost have a little line ready as a preemptive that I'm not Spanish. I mean, it's obvious I'm not Spanish when I start speaking it, but I always used to, I used, to, used to go, hola. In a shop, or whatever, or on the phone. Uh, antes de nada, soy inglés. Um, uh, mi español es oh, así, así, pero lo intentaré. You know, like, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try. Like, mm -hmm. bear with me. And that, that kind of honesty and uh, being humble about it, it used to just really relax the people. And they're like, okay, cool. Well, he's having a go, at least. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I think we've also got to fight against this uh, stereotype of, um, I'm going to say Brits, uh, whether it's, I don't think it's the same with Americans and Australians and people, but, you know, the kind of Benny Dorn Brit, uh, lots of booze and goes in the red line and the bull's head just hangs around with like their own British people, don't speak a word of Spanish, right? And I think in a town like this anyway, there's not many uh, uh, extranjeros or giddies or whatever we want to call them. And I think as soon as you start and at least make an effort with it, they go, okay, he's not just your typical. Uh, on the beer, Magaluf Benidorm, Brit. He's, he's, he's made an effort. He's fitting in the culture. He's come to the kind of three upper galleries. You know, he's doing all right. So they tend to give you a little bit of space. They give you a bit of leeway to make those mistakes as well. You know. Sure, of course. Yeah, I, I really haven't. Uh, um, I haven't experienced any. I mean, I, I remember when I went to Mexico. Uh, the first question they said to me was, "It, it is hooligan." <laughs> <laughs> hooligan, yeah. hooligan? What? No, I'm not. Um, but obviously we yeah we do have a reputation but that's more that's more in the south in Torrejon you know the, the, it, Torrejon's filled with people who aren't from Torrejon you know yeah. it, it, but mostly Spanish speaking people you know yeah so the, the kind of um, and in here in my, I mean my zone I'm the only I'm the only English in the village yeah <laughs> uh, the only Brit in the village yeah <laughs> and so uh, but the 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 nice thing and this is another. This is another nice thing, guys. You, you give away where you were from. The game, the game that I play now is that people know that I'm not Spanish. Clearly, as soon as I start speaking, mm. don't know where I'm from. 
And well, that's, yeah. that's a that's... really big deal there eh? because normally uh, people from the UK are, are, can be spotted instantly because of the, the accent that they bring with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my job has always been to, to try, and often they think I'm German. Um, the German, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I see that. But the, the, the <laughs> rarely do they say. Normally, they said they're on the edit, yeah, the, rather than it is English for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know what you mean. That happened to me at the beginning. They were, it was proper obvious. I was, I was British, but yeah, slowly it, it changed. You know, I could have been from Poland. I could have been from from like you say Germany, or I could have been from Estonia. Like it wasn't. They were not sure after a while. Yeah, but you know what's come to mind actually when you say that. Um, and I think this is a good tip as well for people learning a language, is if you're good at impressions, right, and you just did a Welsh impression then when you were quoting Little Britain, if you're good at impressions and accents and that, and you're good at copying, imitating other people, then I think that's a good way to get your head around like, getting a better accent in Spanish, you know what I mean? And I think, like, I, as a kid, I was always pretty good at impressions. We, me and brother, used to watch like Eddie Murphy videos and Billy Connolly videos, and we always used to come out around the house, you must be out of your goddamn mind. And we, we were quite good at that, right? Um, and I think that's always stuck with me. I've been able to, to hear something and very easily copy it. And for me, getting better at the accent, not sounding as, as, as English with it, with the, with, the, <laughs> with the erring, you know, the rolling R, the perro and all that. I mean, that took me ages to get, to be able to do the R. A real giveaway is when, People say perro, you know, perro, and it's really they're rounding the sound of it, you know, cebeza, uh, yeah. cintia, you know, saying things that should be with a s, with a th. You know, that sounds odd at first, but just doing impressions of people you hear, you know, exactly. and I think that's. Yeah, a... you're spot on, uh, Richard. You know, I often talk about this, this because here in Spain, taking on the Spanish accent is probably the most important thing you can do with your Spanish yeah. to get the best response from people. You know, yeah. you can speak a, you can speak Spanish fantastically well, but with a super English accent, and you won't get the compliments that you would get if you had a medium Spanish with a Spanish accent. You know, when yeah, you, because they, they have an expression they say here in Spain, or oh, el, el habla sin acento, right? yeah, Which yeah. without bringing the accent from his own country. Um, yeah. And what I say to people about the the accent, and it, it's exactly what you said. You've got to fake it. It's a fake accent. It's not your yeah. accent. You've got to fake it. You've got to pretend. And lots of people get embarrassed to pretend. You know, it's like if you if you're speaking French, you know, and, and you start to, you've got to speak, you've got to do that. That's what you've got to do. Yeah. It's the same with Spanish. You've got to fake it and just just copy what you hear. Yeah. It's it, but it's frightening, but it's actually it's more. It's more shocking for a Spanish person to hear somebody say, Me llamo Gordon, are you so de Inglaterra? Yeah. Okay, yeah. much more shocking for them than for you to say, eh, Me llamo, me llame Gordon. But with right. an accent, they'll, they'll, they'll forgive you at, your error know. if you've got a good accent. But they, they, they don't like to hear people speaking with a really strong accent. That, that reminds me of something you said once in a video some years ago now, but you're talking about language being like a music right and you're yeah. sort of saying when you're saying it it's like hitting a bum note i think you, you said exactly yeah and that, and that was really took home to me you know and it you're right they'll forgive you a little a little tense error they'll forgive you a letter wrong here and there but if it just sounds you know like you're reading it yeah or i don't know how to, it's hard to explain it but it's just wrong on the ear, isn't it? And, and, yeah. and, people, and they, they, they won't even go near giving you that margin. Do you know what I mean? I sure. think the accents, the accents, definitely, definitely important. But as again, going back to what we were saying about it depends on who's listening, right? Mm -hmm. that, 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 that reciprocity, right? That, that sort of the other side of it. Um, I always found there were some people that gave me more of a buffer zone were getting it wrong than others. I always found people... Uh, my age or between sort of, I don't know, in the 20s uh, up to, I don't know, 50s, 60s, 80s, whatever. And I always thought like los mayores, the, the abuelos, abuelas, and, and the little niños, the little kids, I thought they were the people that they, they didn't, if I didn't get it right, they didn't understand a word. I mean, I remember once I was talking about going on holiday and I said, next month I'm going to the beach next month. And instead of, uh, I said, mess, um, Mesa. I think I said Mesa que viene. Uh, mesa que viene. So you're talking Mesa and Mes, right? And it's one letter. 
you know, it's like, oh, come on, give us a chance. I got one letter wrong. But it's a difference between saying month and table, right? Exactly. And, and you know, and if I say to someone like kind of my age around the party, around the, around the table, I say, yeah, see, uh, uh, la mesa que viene, vamos a la, a la playa, right? And they know, like, in the context, you know, he means, he meant month, right? And, it, and cool. they'll, they'll throw me a bone and they'll, they'll move on. But this, I remember this abuelo in the park, this old fella, and he just looked at me and went, ¿Qué? ¿El qué? ¿Mesa? ¿Mesa que viene la playa? Pues no tiene sentido, tío. And he, had this, he was really attacking me. And I'm like, oh, what, what did I do wrong? And he didn't help me or tell me, uh, you know. And I thought, there's some people, they just have that more, uh, let's call it men, men, mente cerrada, you know. It's more mm -hmm. of a, a pueblo mentalidad, you know what I mean? It's just like, right, I'm not going to. But those more used to it, those more, more well-traveled or the watch TV more, you know, you get away with it more. You know. Sure, yeah. I think there are just different people as well. You know, there there is some there are some people that are very generous with their their conversation, the time. I mean, I I much prefer to talk to women than I do to men here in Spain, just totally because good. I understand them better. They don't use uh, as much slang. They've got a. I like the tone because women Spanish women have the uh, English man's tone. So it's, yeah. it's okay, where Spanish men are much more low in bass. And so it's sometimes hard to even hear what they're saying. And then, the, you know, the pronunciation's not as great. So, you know, my preference is if I'm at a party, I'll be talking to women yeah. <laughs> just because it's easier to hear, you know? Whereas a man, oh, that's, what I, that's, what I, that's what I hear sometimes, you know? <laughs> and is that the only reason for that, Gordon, the, the, the voice and the way they speak or also the topics of conversation? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm kind of the most atypical English person, so I don't watch football. I don't know anything about sport. It doesn't interest me at all, um, and and I don't. I'm not interested in politics. I'm not. And so what I, what I find is that the, a lot of my my topics are not very interesting to Spanish men. No, and no, I know no. that's very generalized. But I mean, we, I have beautiful conversations with Spanish men. I've had some beautiful conversations, but generally. Uh, I, I kind of I, I resonate more with Spanish women when I'm chatting to them. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. That was kind of the reason I asked you because my my sort of playground of a classroom when I was going through the beginning stages of this was the Los Columpios, you know, the, the, the parks and all that because I've got little children and I would have my Spanish theory classes online uh, while they were having the siesta or whatever. Uh -huh. And then I would get, get the pram and we would go to the parks and then I would just be chatting and practicing. And the most of the time, the people uh, in the parks with the children were, were, were women, you know, mothers. So uh, there, was a, there was loads and loads of practice and chats and I don't know, the stuff we talk about. Like, I've got loads of vocabulary that's around having kids. I've never had kids in England, you see. So pañales and toaitas and el carrito, la cuna. Like there's tons of words. <laughs> I'll have to think about it to think, well, what is that in... In England, you know, like, packet of a packet of bolas, you know, like I have English mates come over with the little kids and I'll say, "It's has got a packet of bolas." What's that? And I have to think, well, what, what do you call that in England? I don't know. And they, and they, oh, you mean one of them soft play centres with the with the balls and the, yeah, yeah, that's a soft play centre. But that seems too many words for me. I, I don't know. It's I think not... we, we did we say ballpark? The ballpark. Oh, is that maybe? Um, am I thinking of something else? No, I think a ballpark's more baseball, isn't it? In America, if you'd say maybe. different, but uh, no, maybe yeah. It depends where it is. When I was little, there was a place in Blackpool called Jungle Gyms, and that was that was the name of it. That was the brand La Marca, you know. That was the uh -huh. brand of it. And then everyone from from where we were from just said, "Oh, Jungle Gyms, you know, let's go Jungle Gyms." But there was only one in Blackpool, so you went every five years if you were lucky. It was well expensive, so uh -huh. I think I just some mates still call it Jungle Gyms, yeah. Jungle gyms. So do, does it happen to you now because you've spent a long time, I don't know how, how often you get back to the UK, um, but do you, do you find that your, your English vocab sometimes gets lost and you can think of the Spanish word, but you can't think of the English word? Yeah, that's a really interesting point, Gordon. And I think a lot of it happens. I, I, I go, I, I used, before the pandemic, I would try and get back a couple of times a year just to see friends, so just a kind of weekend away, I think they call it here in Spain, like, uh, what is it called? That's Fiesta de, de, de Soltero, it's almost like a stag do almost. You know oh, I mean? okay, okay. Uh -huh. um, but um, but uh, recently, in the summer, actually, we went as a family, we stayed uh, we stayed over in Clitheroe for, for a month uh, out in England there. Um, and it was weird because there were so many things that were strange to me. 
about the things that they had and didn't have in Tesco's, for example. Uh, I went to the butchers and they didn't know when I ordered mincemeat that I wanted it cut from that piece and that piece and mixed. And like a lot of things that I only do here, I've only ever done it here. I've only ever really started cooking here and going shopping and buying fresh fish and all that. And it just bugged me that a lot of the things in England kind of like, this is odd, this is weird. And mm -hmm. I thought, there's a phrase in Spanish, isn't there, that it, it can be our old chip. You know, you sort of you sort of change your chip a little bit, and uh -huh. I think, I think to answer your question, I've gone. You go through a sort of cycle, really. You know, you, you, at the beginning, you sort of uh, a lot of things are strange, the cultural differences, and you start. To, you just don't like it very much. You, this is weird. The the rude. They're very direct. These people don't open doors for me. Why don't they use their indicators and all that? And you start <laughs> getting annoyed by it. What the hell are they doing on on a traffic island? What are they doing? Yeah, why are they parking? Why are they double parking everywhere? You know, the doubly filler thing and all that, just like, put the hazards on, park. But but then you 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 accept it, you then you start doing it yourself. And then after a while you're thinking, hang on, I just ordered a drink and didn't say please there. I just said, you know, I just said pom on cafe. And I, 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 you become like it in the end. And, sure, you know, course, uh, course, yeah. so yeah, sometimes I do I, I do get mixed with with the English words and phrases. And I always say that thing where they go. But they say no at the end of a sentence. So, well, well uh, was, was Bama say no? Right. It's like the question of, let's do that, shall we? Um, and they don't really say that in, in the UK, right? So, if I'm speaking English, I'm like, well, yeah, but we'll, we'll do that then, no? And, and it, I do this big no with a big raise at the end. I'm like, what did you say no for? I thought we, you know, wanted to tell. That becomes part of your vocab. After Absolutely. My, my son, uh, because obviously we we lived, Cynthia moved over to the UK and we lived there for 12 years, but we still did the same, you know, one week in Spanish, one week in English. Um, and my son said to me, Dad, why do you finish every sentence with no? Yeah. Really? Because, it, because in, it's a beautiful way to end a sentence. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, you can't complain about it. It's fantastic. You know, no, we do that. No. Um, mm. But obviously, yeah, it sort of it, it bled into my English. Yeah, yeah, it it does though. I think it's like, um, it, it's faster. I think the Spanish language is is more efficient, right? Uh, especially with the pronombres. You know what I mean? Decaselo, uh, like it's just right. It doesn't matter if it's him or her. We're just going to use one word. Uh, and I, I don't know. The law law covers so much as well. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, lo importante, whatever. It's the same. The 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 most important thing. It's almost like when you get used to it, you think right. That's that makes more sense. It's actually quicker and faster and easier to do it like that. Especially the please and thank you thing, which at the beginning drove me insane. People just saying dame medio kilo, pon me un café. That's rude, you know. That's just rude. But sure. After, after a while, you think it's not. You know, the imperativo is a way of speaking. It's it's it's. Uh, Okay, it's orders, I guess, but it's just, it's more efficient. If I, I used to do it in the English way where I would say, you know, eh, me puedes ponerme eh, medio kilo de estas plátanos, eh, por favor, si no te importa. And I'd use about 25 words of trying to be polite, right? And in the end, the guy's like, there's a cue, mate. Well, you're kicking this. There's a cue, get on with it. There's a cue behind you. And then they have, they, and someone I met, the abuela next to me would just say, eh, ponme medio kilo. And he does, and he's not bothered that she didn't say please or whatever. And all right, it's, this is the way it is. Do you absolutely, know what I mean? absolutely. I mean, I, I learned the system is is you can use please once. Once you've done the one please, everything after that, there's no please involved. You know, I, you know, if if you want to use a please. But I remember once going into a bar, saying to the the guy, "I just come from Mexico. That's how they did it there." And I said, "Me gustaría una cerveza." And the guy <laughs> yeah. said. Te gustaría, pero si quieres una cerveza. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I would like one. Yeah, I know you would like one, but do you want one? <laughs> you know, it's like, bastard. <laughs> That's a really interesting point. I mean, I want to ask you this question about you. So you've got a Spanish wife and the communication problems between my wife and I sometimes with asking for things. Do you experience that as well in terms of like, uh, oh, I was uh, thinking of going out on Friday with Dave. Uh, have you got plans for Friday? Or have you, you know, like this round the round the house kind of way of like saying I I'm going out, right? Whereas the opposite way, she'll just say, "Me oh, vienes, voy a salir con Pilar," and it's like it's just faster. There's no real questions and all that. And so a lot of the time when I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get something or ask for something, she's like, "What do you want?" Get to the point. Be more. Be more direct. <laughs> do, you, do you get that or not? You're being so English about this. Like, just what do you want? 
uh, I, I think what what's happened over time with Cynthia and myself is that that I've kind of I've become moved towards Spanish and she's moved toward English and so we get this reasonable balance in the middle. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whereas whereas both of us have kind of shifted. I mean, Cynthia came here. Now, after living in the UK, if somebody uh, lets her through, she says thank you. She lets people through in the car. She mm. makes me put the indicator on even when I forget. Um, <laughs> you know, she she says, eh, "Me pones una un un té, por favor." She oh, used okay. to please. So she she kind of like she's taken what she liked about the way the the the, the UK uses stuff like that, and she's yeah. brought it here, you know, and she just says, oh, "I just feel more comfortable now doing that." But right. It, so it's it's interesting. It's kind of like so we've kind of had this. We're a bit a fusion, a fusion right. of the two cultures, you know. Okay, that's interesting. And as a parent, then with little children or any children, I think where where we're from, the the please and thank you is drummed into you. It's drilled into you from such an early age. You know, and what's the magic word? What do you say? Please, thank you. And and I found here even before our children were old enough to speak, we'd be in bars and restaurants and I would hear these little kids just saying, agua, you know, galletas. Try me agua. Mama, try me agua. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd be like, what, what's that about? You know, and they would get it given them. There'd be no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, mm -hmm. there was none of that. And I, and then, so when our kids were around the table and they started to learn to speak and all that, and they would, and I'd say, uh, and what do you say? And then after a while, <laughs> Monica's like saying, oh, come on, take it easy with the whole, you know, please and thank you, police. Let it go a bit. So we, we blended it now, but it was so uh -huh. hard for me to just let them ask me for stuff and go, and, you know, mas agua. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a really interesting subject because what what I'm what I'm aware of with our children is that because I only speak to them in English and Cynthia only speaks to them in Spanish, right. and so what I've done is I've inculcated them into them the the please and thank you. So yeah. when they ask me in English for something, they say, uh, "Can I have some water, please?" And I say, "Yeah, no problem." And that's been with the uh, you don't ask like that; you have to say please. Yeah. But when they ask the mum, they don't. They ask it in the Spanish way. Mama, right. agua. <laughs> um, tráeme agua. Yeah. And that's absolutely fine because when I've tried to get them, I mean, with my parents-in-law, I, I got in, into trouble with uh, off them for, for making the kids say please and thank you. No se hace. No es necesario. Déjale. Okay. Um, and and so so basically it's, it's just beautiful to see the two cultures that they've got because if they go back to the UK, I want them to be pleasing and thanking you because if not, they're going to upset yeah. you, you know? Totally, totally. They have to be. They, 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 like you say, they're, they're going to be in a lot of trouble and looked at as very bad-mannered if, if they're not doing that, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's a very similar situation. It's it's very, very similar mm. Uh, mm. to us. Uh -huh.